Connect Forth, the radio forum for students. Hi, I'm Gavin Orr, station manager for Connect Forth, and for this year's Modern Apprentice scheme, we hired in four lucky contestants, not really actually, four brand new students for the scheme who decided to put together another Ask an Expert podcast right here for Connect Forth. And I'm joined in the studio right now by all four of them. Say hi. 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 Right, go on, introduce yourselves. I'm Daisy and I'm a Modern Apprentice at STV. I'm Alice and I work in the comms and marketing department at Fourth Valley College. I'm Callum and I'm a receptionist and admin assistant at Action of Mind, our mental health charity in Stirling. I'm Craig and I work with the communications, marketing and events department at Stirling Council. Okay, so this motley crew decided to put together four little podcasts all together with an Ask an Expert theme. And the themes range from the weather, running, golf and the first one here. We're going to start off with aviation. Connect Fourth. The Radio Forum for Students. I'm Craig Tuff and I recently interviewed my friend Luke who has a passion for aviation. This is what he had to say. So when did you start first becoming interested in aviation? Well I went on my first plane when I was about three months old. Um, And obviously I didn't know what was happening then. But I've kind of just grown up kind of loving planes and go plane spotting, I mean I was going plane spotting probably 2005-ish was my first spot with my papa, he used to take me out to Edinburgh Airport. Is there any specific area of aviation that you're particularly interested in? Well, I like civil, civil is my um, my main interest, but military I like as well, um, but mostly civil. Are you a member of any aviation clubs or organisations? Um, not at the moment, no, uh, but I plan, um, I plan to be pretty soon, uh, I'm hoping to join some kind of aviation club or something like that, and maybe get back a private pilot's licence, that's uh, my kind of tenure plan to get that, um, yeah, basically, yeah, I'm not in a flying club right now, but should be hopefully in a couple of years' time. Do you have any flying experience and or training and if not, would you like to be able to learn how to fly? Well, um, flying experience, I have no flying experience at all, um, but I do play um, simulators, which I don't know if you can count as flying in real life, but it's, you know, the physics of it, you know, does what a plane will do, um, I also play Infinite Flight, um, which is on my phone. Um, it's quite fun. You fly around an Airbus, Boeing, Bombardier, uh, kind of whatever, military as well. Um, so yeah, that's where I've basically picked up a lot of the, the tips of flying and kind of learning how to actually fly an aircraft, at least the simulators. I'm just going to save up and try and get my PPL um, as soon as possible, really, because... I've just got that bug that I just want to fly. Do you have a particular favourite type of plane? And if you do, why is that your favourite type of plane? Well, my favourite has to be the 787 Dreamliner. Um, why is my favourite? Um, it's still a mystery to me, but I just really like its features. It's just beautiful, really, um, in my eyes. Um, it's quiet... The wing flex is amazing. Cabin lights are awesome. Uh, being in the cockpit as well, and the cockpit is just spot on. Um, plus, it's the kind of the newer um, Boeing that uh, Boeing has obviously brung out, so it's obviously up there. Um, second um, would have to be um, the probably in the Airbus. Uh, I like the Airbus A380. Um, obviously, but um, it's not my favourite. Seven eight seven is definitely um, my favourite. Um, I went in that last year to uh, Cancun, Mexico. Uh, it was a privilege to fly in it, um, and I really, really enjoyed it. I got some great pictures, and I really enjoyed it. So uh, yeah, seven eight seven, and uh, yeah, basically seven eight seven, love it, and it's my favourite. Civilian uh, aviation has to be my kind of number one. Um, it's the most I know, it's the most I research. 
Um, but uh, military, I like military. Um, RAF jets, RAF planes, uh, United States Air Force planes, helicopters for military, but also obviously civilian is what I know. And you know, I mean, I, I'm a plane spotter, so most of the plane spotting is at civilian airports. So you know, kind of, I'm used to civilian spotting. So yeah, it would have to be civilian. Well, good luck, Luke. I wish you all the best, and I hope you get your pilot's licence very soon. So did you see the new Mad Max movie? Yeah, how awesome was that scene where... I've not seen it. Oh, OK. How about the new James Bond? Yeah, how good was Daniel Craig in it? I've not seen that either. Did you see Jurassic World? I loved it. Seriously, how have you guys seen so many movies? Uh, we have unlimited cards. We can see yeah. as many films as we want. Don't be that person who's never seen anything. With a Cineworld Unlimited card, you can see all the movies you can watch for one simple monthly price at many of our fantastic cinemas. You also get a 15% discount on all food and drinks. Enjoy the magic of movies with a Cineworld Unlimited card. When you enrolled as a student at Forth Valley College, you automatically became a member of the Student Association. This year, the SA offers a representation for the student body, ensuring that your voice is heard. And they will offer advice on different issues and situations such as academic or welfare. Also, as a member, you can gain access to the online student blog Cusion, and it also means that more support is made ready available to you throughout the year. So why not get involved with the Student Association? And email us at student.association at fourthvalley.ac.uk or phone us on 01324 403290 or follow them on Facebook. Fourth Valley Student Association, letting the student voice be heard. Connect Fourth. Today I'm interviewing Joyce Burnett, Finance Officer at Action and Mind. So what first got you interested in playing golf? I was very, very lucky. We won a, a competition which was to get a one-to-one lesson with Nick Faldo, Nick Faldo being one of the UK's biggest golf stars. And my husband and I, neither of us actually played golf at the time, but to take part in the competition we needed to buy a set of golf clubs and we had to get a few lessons. So we did that and we went down to the Belfry, got a one-to-one lesson with Nick Faldo and we played a competition for which both of us did very well in, even after just a couple of lessons. I was absolutely hooked from that point onwards. Took up a membership at my local club which because of work commitments I actually couldn't play very often. Did that for a couple of years and then four years ago when I had a wee bit more time decided to take it up seriously because I'm a fairly competitive person anyway and golf just seemed to be the right sport that I could take on being slightly older whereas most sports you would start when you were younger but golf you can take up at any age and it would give me the chance of a sport and be competitive and something that I could improve on. Soon discovered quite a lot of my family play golf, and very soon discovered that it was a sport you could play with any age group. So you can play with the youngest person in the family and the oldest person in the family, and you could play all over the world. Whether you knew people or not, you could go into a golf club, say that you wanted a game, and there would be somebody there to play with. And would you say it's opened up any social opportunities? Hugely. I I can go into a competition situation where I know nobody at all. For example, Golf in Scotland is something that I joined two years ago, which is the biggest amateur competition in the UK. And I can go along there without knowing anybody, join a a four ball, which is a team of four people, to play the game. And then afterwards, you're in a social setup with lots and lots of like-minded people all who like the same sport. I'm ladies' captain this year of my local golf club. And you get a lot of invitations to other places, and it doesn't faze me at all to go and meet people for the first time because you know you've got the, the common factor as you, you've got a passion for golf. Also, the golf clubs themselves, they're open to everybody. You can come off the street into a golf club, although a lot of people don't realise that. Very often there's events on at each club, at social events, dances, uh, quiz nights, race nights. There's things going on all over the country which people don't know about. 
so yeah, a golf club certainly a high for, for social improvement in your life. Now, it's also provided some professional opportunities for you as well. Could you tell me about the event last year with Sandy Lyle? Again, of the same era as Nick Faldo was, Sandy Lyle has been probably Scotland's most successful golfer. We're lucky enough that St Fillan's is his local golf course. So on, on the back of my vice captaincy at the time, I, I was involved in the promotions committee at the, at the golf club and got permission from the club to approach Sandy to see if he was willing to put his name to a competition that we were going to hold. So he not only was willing to put his name to the competition, he put up a, an amazing trophy for us and attended for 12 to 15 hours on the day to meet all the players. Every player was introduced to him. Every player got a wee bit of advice from him and also he was uh, around socially for people to meet. We had a junior team there as well who met with Sandy and then they looked up about him, you know, they, they found out about him and he spent a lot of time with the juniors as well. During that time, we to promote the event, we managed to get in touch with STV who then ran a couple of episodes on the event on the Riverside Show. So that, that was very interesting and also it was a huge boost for us to, to market our club at such a special occasion and to have Sandy's name behind the club that allows us to further promote the club for the future, the great future. So the event we will be organising every two years. We hope that's going to grow bigger and bigger and attract more sponsorship and become a, an event on the, the amateur calendar that nobody could miss out on. And what was involved behind the scenes in setting up the event? A lot of work, it probably took 12 months to get the event set up. With it being an inaugural event, we had to, to let people know, first of all, about the event. Having Sandy on the back of it to market it meant that it allowed me to, to contact a lot of the golf organisations who, once they saw his name was involved, they were then willing to, to help us promote it and push it on social media. Social media is probably the biggest platform that we have in golf because you can immediately get out there to like-minded people by using keywords, hashtags. So there was a lot of work involved in social media creation and, and building the Facebook page, etc. Trying to get sponsorship probably took up six months of the 12 months and we weren't successful with getting any substantial sponsorship for the first event. This was mainly because the bigger organisations, they try and organise the sponsorship at least 18 months in advance. Well, good luck with the next event, Joyce. And who knows, some of the listeners might be interested in attending. <laughs> this is the worst day of my life. Things can't get any worse. I just can't afford to do it for going out at the weekend. Have no fear, my child. I'm here to save the day. Ah! Who are you? How did you get in here? I'm your fairy godmother. My name is Eunice Days and I'm here to make sure you will go to the ball. Uh, club. I can get you discounts on Jack Wills, ASOS, Boohoo, Misguided, Spotify, Urban Outfitters, Topshop, Levi, Shoe, Ugg, Benefit, Dorothy Perkins, Quiz and many, many more. You shall go to the ball. I mean club. Club Tinderella. Sign up for Unidays via unidays.com and you too can go to the ball. Fitness at the campus. Swing into the gym to get the body you have always wanted. It might not be perfect, but it is yours. Hone it, tone it, define it and refine it. Open weekdays at Four Valley College campuses, still in Falkirk and Alloa. State of the art equipment, fitness classes and personal training with an annual membership ranging from £10 to £25. I would recommend the gym. They've got great facilities and it's great value for money. You can only win with a membership to the gym. Google Fourth Valley College Gym for more details. Connect Fourth. I caught up with Karen, who is a keen runner. Firstly, what inspired you to get fit? I first got into running to try and get a bit healthier because I'd stopped smoking and thought it would be a good alternative to keep me busy and try not to get too overweight from not having a cigarette anymore. Running has recently motivated me to join a local gym um, and I really particularly enjoy the spin classes which in turn help my legs which again help me when I'm out running. My legs always feel a lot better once I've done a spin class a couple of days before it and I also enjoy taking my dogs big long walks again another way of keeping fit without the running but as I said before you can do it with the running running's great, you can do it on your own you can do it with other people and it's just a win-win situation Running started out as a hobby for you but what was your first big run? The first big run I did was the Great North Run which is a half marathon and I decided to do that after watching Paula Radcliffe run it just looked really good fun and it turned out it was 
I've done other half marathons, such as everything from the Aloha Half Marathon to Glasgow, Edinburgh. But my biggest run to date, which was in 2007, was the New York Marathon that I ran with nine of my friends. You start off in Staten Island and then you run through all the different areas of New York and it was just wonderful and there's a fantastic crowd support from the Americans. They're so enthusiastic about you doing your running and it was just a fantastic experience. You come back in and finish in Central Park and everybody's there cheering. The New York Marathon. Wow, what an achievement for all of you. How did you feel after the race? We were all ready to celebrate, but when it actually came to it and everybody got back home, we had a glass of wine and all fell asleep. But then the next day, it really dawned on us our achievement and we were all very stiff, very sore, but really quite hyper. What advice would you give to someone who was considering taking up running? Just really to say, to start slowly. It doesn't matter too much what you wear, but I would say invest in a really expensive pair of trainers, a proper good pair of trainers, because you do need it and it does help with your running. Is there anything that you don't enjoy about running? I don't mind if I'm out running and it starts to rain, but I find it very hard to motivate myself to go out when it's already pouring down. But if you do manage to do it, you actually can feel quite smug about it afterwards. Do you think that you'll continue to run in the future? I never thought... I'd keep running when I was in my 50s, but uh, I was 50 last December and here I am still running and still enjoying it. Thanks Karen, keep up the good work, you never know where you might end up running to next time. A book, it's a world on its own, a world made of words where you live for a while. Immerse yourself in countless stories, magic and wonder when you pick up a book from Waterstones. If you need to escape for a while, you might just discover the perfect book to do that. So what are you waiting for? It's time to discover new worlds today. You can also collect all your educational books for your studies. Download Unidays from the App Store today and get a 10% discount if you spend £25 or more. You can even order a book online at waterstones.com and collect it at your nearest store paying the online price. If you don't fancy that, you can get a free home delivery when you spend over £25. Come on down to the High Street Falkirk and the Thistle Centre Stirling. Terms and conditions apply. First rule of film club is, you do talk about film club. Second rule of film club is, talk about it with your friends. Anything from horror, sci-fi, thriller, action, comedy. I am McLovin. Here at Fourth Valley College Film Club, you can watch and discuss all your favourite movies. There's no limits. Be the first to find all ten of our iconic movie posters around campus and win free popcorn at the first four of our film screenings. Boys are very nice. For more information, all you have to do is head over to our Facebook page where you can join the group of film fanatics. FVC Film Club. Let's talk about it. Ask the baby. Connect fourth. I caught up with STV's weatherman, Sean Batty, and asked him about his job and his love of meteorology. Sean opened with what first got him interested in weather. Well, I first got interested in weather when I was about five or six years old. It started off at a really young age. Um, don't really know what it was that started it off. And then it was from a sixth or seventh birthday. I got a BBC weather kit, which basically had uh, weather instruments for the garden, though I could measure the weather, um, and also had a map with little stick-on weather symbols. So I used to drive my family crazy by standing in front of this map with stick-on weather symbols while they were trying to watch the telly, and I'm like, watch me, I'm going to do the weather. And while people at you know, school want to become footballers or vets or doctors, you know, I always put up my hand and I said, I want to be a weatherman. And of course, you, you get a lot of giggles around the classroom. He then went on to explain how he got into the career he has today. When I left high school, which wasn't that long ago, um, it was year 2000, I had to, to kind of go to a university where I could study meteorology and back then there was only Reading University. When I left university, I actually went straight into the Met Office as a weather observer. So my first job in the Met Office was uh, just to go and observe the weather. Um, now, that might sound really easy because all it means is you go out every hour, look at the weather in your location. So I, I worked at uh, an army air base, that was my very first job. I worked there for just over a year. Um, then I went in to work uh, for ITV Weather for a while. And then I went to uh, the BBC and I used to travel around the UK presenting the weather for other presenters that were off. So I would spend two weeks in Northern Ireland, I'd spend a week in Bristol, a week in Leeds. 
three weeks in Cardiff. So I was constantly travelling around with a suitcase. It was great fun when I was in my early 20s, but it started to wear a bit. And when I was over in Belfast presenting the weather, um, I got a phone call from STV saying they were looking for somebody and would I want to come and work here? So that's how it all started, and, and that was nine years ago, unbelievably now. <laughs> Sean then explains how he makes a weather forecast. So from my desk to the television is obviously the kind of final point to making a forecast because obviously my first job uh, was as a weather observer. So you've got weather observers all over the UK, you've got automatic weather stations that are feeding data in all over the UK, all around the world, all at the same time as well. So you've got millions and millions of observations coming in, satellite pictures, radar, that's all fed into a big supercomputer in Exeter, which is where the Met Office is based. So yeah, it comes to me in the form of what we call raw data, which basically is just weather charts with cloud, rain on it, so I can interpret that and work out where the cloud and rain is going to be. That is really the final point, but what people see on television is actually only about 5% of my day. Most of my day I'm actually sitting at my desk preparing all the charts and, and the, the forecast for television. I tested Sean's expertise in what causes the Northern Lights. The Northern Lights, there's always a, a solar wind that comes from the sun. Uh, but occasionally you get a solar flare, um, a coronal mass ejection um, from the sun, and these are just huge blasts of plasma that come from the sun, they travel out into space. And as I said, there's always a solar wind, but when we get these blasts coming from the sun, you get a huge blast of solar wind, which then attacks the Earth's uh, upper atmosphere. Basically, the colours that are in the sky are um, the electrically charged particles that are in the upper atmosphere lighting up. A bit like, a, um, you know, like the um, tube lighting you get which is actually filled with gas, and when you excite the particles in that, they light up. I've travelled to Tromso, which is in the Arctic Circle, the very northern tip of Norway, and I've been to Iceland quite a few times, and there it is absolutely just blow you away. I can't actually describe how amazing it is, it just gives you goosebumps. Finally, Sean talked about his favourite type of weather. Easy there, snow. 2009-10, you may remember that was the winter that we had, which was the icy, the snowy winter. I loved that. And I think people always pick up from me that I love the weather that everybody else hates. People get really upset whenever I go on television, I'm so excited, we've got really heavy rain on the way, we've got really strong winds on the way, we've got a big storm, or we've got really heavy snow and really low temperatures. So I like all the stuff that everybody else hates. Uh, most people like a quiet life from the weather. I mean, the weather we've got at the moment is fairly quiet, but that kind of weather for me is just kind of like, you know, imagine going to your work and it's the same all the time. You want a challenge and, and it's weather like that that really challenges me when storms come along. Well, that was my expert in all things rain, cloud and snow. Thanks for talking to me, Sean. Connect 4, the radio forum for students. Oh, yeah.